Hello everyone, welcome. Today I am going to discuss about HIV virus, so human immunodeficiency virus. So let's start right off with the structure of HIV. So as you can see here, HIV is an enveloped RNA protein, RNA virus, and its RNA genome is actually diploid, so it has actually two RNA genomes, and it is a retrovirus because it has reverse transcriptase which helps it to convert its RNA genome and make it a DNA genome and also you see the capsid proteins so it has a capsid protein which is called P24 and it has a membrane which is a lipid bilayer and in the membrane it has some surface glycoproteins and one is transmembrane glyco glycoprotein which is called GP41 and another is docking glycoprotein which is called GP120 or 120 those are actually very important proteins which help the which helps the HIV molecule or HIV virus to get inside a cell so that's very those are very important and those are also targets for drug treatment and also reverse transcriptase is a very important target for drug treatment against HIV okay so this is the basic idea here so HIV has a diploid genome so it ha you already have seen that it has two molecules of RNA and there are actually three structural genes one is NV one is CAG and another is Paul especially the NV gene is very important it uh, actually gives rise to two important glycoproteins which is one is GP120 and one is another is GP41 GP120 and GP41 actually form from cleavage of GP160 or 160 the 120 actually helps the attachment to the CD4 helper T cell and the G GP41 actually helps the fusion and entry. So it helps in the stage 1 first step and it helps in the second step of a infection of CD4 positive T cell by HIV virus. And the GAG gene, uh, trans uh, GAG gene actually codes for P24 which is the capsid protein. And the Paul gene codes for multiple enzymes one is reverse transcriptase which converts the RNA genome to the DNA one is another is aspartic protease another important one is integrates so whenever the reverse transcriptase converts the RNA to a DNA the DNA is then integrated into the host genome by this enzyme integrase okay so this is the basic idea here and as I've already mentioned reverse transcriptase synthesize double-stranded DNA from the RNA and DSDNA then gets integrated into the host genome by the help of integrase and virus can bind CD4 as well as a core receptor either by CCR5 very important on the macrophages in case of early infection or CXCR4 on T cells in late infection and this gets very important in case of a mutation of CCR5 so CCR5 actually helps the B, uh, B, uh, HIV virus to get inside a macrophage or other cells and if there is a mutation of CCR5 uh, it will actually prevent the HIV to get, get inside the um, uh, cells especially the immune cells so that's why if there is a homozygous CCR5 mutation if CCR5 is totally mutated there will be immunity to HIV and if there is a heterozygous CCR5 mutation there will be a slower course of HIV okay very important to know so to diagnose HIV the screening test is ELISA so ELISA is a sensitive test but it has a high false positive rates that's why if we get a positive ELISA we need to confirm it with Western blot Western blot is a very specific test that's why uh, we have we can actually confirm after doing ELISA and in ELISA or Western blot, we actually look for antibodies to viral proteins, and those tests are often falsely negative in the first one, in, first first one or two months of HIV infection because maybe antibodies didn't form well, titer is not that high, and maybe falsely positive initially in babies born to infected mothers. Maybe the baby doesn't have the virus, but the baby can have the anti GP20, GP120. Uh, antibody which actually can cross the placenta from maternal circulation and up to the 
fetal circulation so it they, they can be present in fetal, fetal circulation and can give a falsely positive uh, Austin blood test or ELISA test okay. another test is viral load test the important is very important it determines the amount of viral RNA so it's it's a very important indicator of prognosis so if the viral load is high the prognosis will be bad and also you can monitor the drug therapy effectiveness by doing viral load so monetary effect of drug therapy is another use and to diagnose it, the main criteria are first you need a low CD4 positive cell count which is less than 200 per cubic millimeter of blood and on the normal is 500 to 1500 cells per cubic millimeter uh, or a patient who is, HA, who, who is HIV positive previously and now he has or he or she has an AIDS defining condition maybe pneumocystis pneumonia or the CD4 percentage is less than 14 so those are the basic criteria of diagnosis of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS which is actually a complication of HIV infection or a sequelae so here is the time course of an untreated HIV infection so here is uh, actually you can see graph with two main determinants one is CD4 positive cell count and another here is HIV RNA copies so let's get uh, both done so first you have uh, let's talk about the HIV RNA copies so first this is that uh, this is the primary infection so when the primary infection occurs the HIV actually RNA replicates very rapidly and that's why the HIV RNA copies are very high and those in, in those stages there is wide dissemination of virus and seeding of lymphoid organs and there can be lymphadenopathy too but later on as the immunity uh, tries to reduce the burden of HIV the HIV virus level actually drops and it remains uh, it remains in a steady level for multiple years and after a few years like five six seven years the HIV levels again start to rise so they again start to replicate and this replication actually ultimately gets higher 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 and which ultimately leads to death and and this is the this is about the HIV RNA copies and another thing was CD4 positive cell count which is actually more important and first you can see the CD4 positive cell counts are normal like more than uh, 1000 and then it drops a bit but still within normal range and after a certain period of time when the CD4 when the HIV viruses starts to replicate again starts its uh, fast ascend to high RNA copies then the CD4 positive cell counts starts to drop so they go the different directions so when the RNA copies are becoming higher the CD4 positive cell counts becoming lower and that's when the clinical symptoms appear especially when there is count when the count is less than 200 there will be opportunistic infection severe opportunistic infection like pneumocystis and other infections and ultimately as the viral RNA copies will get higher and higher the CD4 count will get lower and lower and it will be extremely low which will lead to severe infection and then it can lead to death so this is the time course of an untreated HIV infection so it has actually four stages first there is the flu like stage or acute stage where we can you have already seen that HIV RNA copies may be very high in this stage but then the HIV RNA copy levels are low and then the patient also feels fine which is the latent phase but later on the HIV again starts to replicate very rapidly which leads to a fall rapidly fall in count of CD4 positive T cell and if the uh, levels of CD4 positive T cell becomes decreased than normal level especially uh, when it is less than 200 there will be severe uh, immunocompromisation leading to severe infection which will lead to final crisis and ultimately death and during latent phase the virus replicates in lymph nodes so let us discuss about what are the infections that we can get if the CD4 positive cell counts are lower than normal so if it is just below the normal which is less than 500 cells per cubic millimeter the patient can have infection with candida which is just simply oral thrush or infection with Epstein-Barr virus can lead to oral hairy leukoplakia or infection with Bartonella hanseli which can lead to bacillary angiomatosis and if you do a biopsy from this patient you, can, you will get a neutrophilic inflammation so here you can see a patient with 
white cardi patches over the tongue so those are candidal trash oral trash and if you take a smear from here you will see pseudo hyphae here you can see the lateral surface of the tongue so lateral margin of the tongue so those are some white areas white patches and it's not easily uh, scrapable here you can see some lesions of bacillary angiomatosis and if you biopsy those lesions you will get some neutrophilic inflammation and it occurred due to Bartonella hanseli so the other infections that can also occur in less than 500 cells human herpes virus 8 infection which can lead to Kaposi's sarcoma and uh, if we do a biopsy from the lesions of Kaposi's sarcoma it will show lymphocytic inflammation there can also be inf infection with cryptosporidium which will lead to a chronic watery diarrhea and if you take a stool sample and die uh, and stain it with a modified acid fast stain you will see acid fast oocytes in stool and the patient can also get infected with HPV if a patient is male he can get uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the anus if a patient is female she can get cervical carcinoma so here you can see some erythematous plaque so dark dark areas dark plaques, bioloceous nodules, so those are the lesions of Kaposi's sarcoma, okay. Here you can see is a stool sample which is actually stained by modified, modified acid, uh, acid fast stain and you can see some acid fast positive cyst, so those are the cryptosporidium oocyst in stool. And here you can see a cut section, actually, actually this is an operated specimen of maybe radical hysterectomy and here you can see uh, the cervix and a growth over the cervix it can occur due to human papillomavirus infection especially type 16 18 31 33 so if the cell count is lower than 200 now there will be more severe infections like infection with toxoplasma gondii and it can lead to uh, multiple brain abscesses so there will be multiple ring enhancing lesions on mri the patient can also have hiv dementia there can be reactivation of jesse virus and this will lead to something called a PML or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy and it will be manifested in MRI as areas of demyelination. The patient can also get pneumocystis gerivisi. so this is also an important disease to know about. It will cause a pneumocystis pneumonia where there will be ground glass opacities on the chest x-ray. So here you can see some ring enhancing lesion here, here, here. So multiple ring enhancing lesions in an HIV patient will actually tell us that this patient has a toxoplasma brain abscess. Here you can see some flare images of a patient of HIV and you can see there are multiple areas of demyelination and this demyelination will gradually increase in severity. So this is called progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy or leukoencephaly which is due to in, uh, reactivation of the Jesse virus. So here you can see a chest x-ray with ground glass appearance. So this is the chest x-ray of a pneumocystis carinii pneumonia. Okay, very important. So it occurs in less than 200 cell counts. If the cell count is even lower, if the cell count is less than 100 cells per, uh, sorry, minute, it will be millimeter cube. There can be infections like Aspergillus fumigatus. So it will it can cause infiltrates on chest imaging or cavitation, and the patient can present with hemoptysis or pleuritic pain. There can be meningitis with cryptococcus pneumoformans and if you take a CSF sample and, as, and stain with India ink, you will see some thickly encapsulated yeast and the patient can have severe systemic candida albicans infection and the candida albicans can cause esophagitis. And if you do an endoscopy, you can see white plaques on endoscopy. And if you, if you, if you take a biopsy, you will see pseudo hyphae and yeast. So here is a chest x-ray of a patient with a very low cell counts and here you can see a cavity in the chest x-ray in the left upper lobe so left apical region so this is due to aspergillus cavitation and the patient can also have some infiltrates due to aspergillus infection. Here you can see an India ink stain from a CSF sample and you can see a very thick a very thick capsule of cryptococcus neoformans and here you can see an endoscopy so this is endoscopy of a HIV patient whose uh, cell count is very low and you can see some white patches white cardi patches over the esophagus so those are the features of candidal esophagitis 
and other infections that can also occur in those severely immunocompromised patients are infection with CMV so CMV can lead to retinitis very important also it can lead to in inflammation of the esophagus colon or lung and in severe cases it can also cause encephalitis so if you do an endoscopy in a patient who has an esophagitis due to CMV the patient will have linear ulcer and if the patient has retinitis there will be some cortinal spots on fundoscopy and if you do a biopsy from the uh, infection infected area you will see intranuclear owl eye inclusion bodies and if the patient gets an infection with Epstein-Barr virus it can lead to B cell lymphoma especially the non-Hodgkin type uh, it can involve the CNS and if there is a CNS lymphoma it will actually appear on the MRI as a ring enhancing lesion and most likely it will be solitary whereas the in case of toxoplasma the ring enhancing lesions are normally multiple so here you can see an endoscopy and there is actually a CMV linear ulcer so this is a, this is a CMV infection and causes a linear ulcer and here you can see a fundoscopy and here you can see the cotonal spots due to CMV retinitis so there are multiple cotonal spots here 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 so though all of them actually occur due to retinitis of by CMV and here you can see a ring enhancing lesion solitary ring enhancing lesion in the left lobe uh, left uh, cerebral hemisphere so this is a CNS lymphoma most likely NHL most likely B cell variety and there are other infections that can also occur in those severely immunocompromised patients are infection with histoplasma capsulatum and it will actually present as fever weight loss fatigue cough dyspnea nausea and other symptoms and if you do a biopsy or if you take a smear you will see oval each cell within macrophages and the patient can also get infected with mycobacterium avium intracellulary or mycobacterium avium complex and those will actually present with non-specific systemic symptoms like fever, night sweat and weight loss like the of TB or lymphoma and can also present with focal lymphadenitis. So here you can see a smear so it shows multiple cells so it's a PBF and here you can see a macrophage uh, inside the macrophage there you can see multiple oval yeasts multiple oval yeast inside the macrophage so this is the histoplasma oval yeast inside the macrophages so that's all from me today thanks for watching my video and stay tuned for more uh, in the next video i'll talk about the antiretroviral therapy thanks for watching my video again